your way. Continue to play softly. I just want to see whatever God want to do. Lord, whatever you want to do, that's what we're going to do in this place today. Because y'all know you can have an agenda, but when you tap into the Holy Spirit's agenda, it's a different kind of agenda. Amen. God bless y'all, young men. Thank y'all for coming to the house of the Lord. Thank y'all for coming to the house of the Lord. Rico, them your people. See how influential you are in God? Just like that. Just Rico joined the 815. And he brought two people with him today. What y'all doing? What y'all doing? Sheep beget sheep. Amen. It's the sheep's responsibility to bring the sheep into the sheepfold. Sheep beget sheep. Come on, let me get into my lesson today. Clap your hands for Jesus. Scriptures 
Satan was reciting the word to Jesus. Did y'all pick up on that? Go to verse number six. Verse number six, he said, and he said to him, Satan is he. To him is Jesus. Satan said to Jesus, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down. And then Satan said, right here, it is written. Satan said, it is written. He will give his angels charge over you, and they will bear you up in their hands, lest you strike your foot against the stone. And then in verse number seven, Jesus said, Jesus said, yeah, I know that that's what the scriptures say. But on the other hand, the scriptures also say, it is written, you shall not tempt. The Lord your God, the um, Amplified says, thoroughly or uh, try exceedingly the Lord your God. So when Satan was coming against Jesus, Jesus fought off Satan with what? The word. What did he fight him off with? The word. What did he fight him off with? The word. So if Jesus is our example, when Jesus. Satan is trying to come against us, yeah. what should we be fighting the devil the with? We should be fighting the devil with the word of God. But I find that some people don't even know the word of God to be able to fight the devil with the word of God. So if you don't know the word of God, it's like having a gun, but you don't have no bullets. So if you know the word of God, then you can fight Satan with the word of God. Because that's the only thing that's going to defeat him. You crying is not going to defeat the enemy. You did it, did it. we danced, we had a good time. Is not going to defeat the enemy. You shout, hey God, hey God, is not going to defeat the enemy. You falling out in the spirit is not going to defeat the enemy. What's going to defeat the enemy is the word of God. So it would behoove you to get some word in your mouth. So for whatever situation you have going on, you should have a word to accompany that situation so you can have the power to fight. Amen? Because if I don't have no word in my mouth, I can't fight. I'm powerless. I'm powerless. So today we're talking about we are the ecclesia. Amen? So the ecclesia is the called out assembly of believers. What's the ecclesia? The called out assembly of believers. The ecclesia is the called out assembly of believers. So when the Bible calls us the ecclesia, somewhere in the King James Version Bible, it got translated to church. So when you see church, it really means the ecclesia. It means us. Say, I am, I am the church. The church. I, am I am the church. The church. So yeah, we come here on Sundays at 1045, 815, and on Tuesdays at 630 and 7 o'clock, but we are the church. So no matter where we go, we should be operating in the supernatural power of God because we are the church. But some people don't believe that they are the church, right? They just believe that it only happens in the house of God. Certain things got to line up before the power of God moves. And that's not true. If you walk in the supernatural power of God, you can do the supernatural power anytime, anywhere, whenever God wants to use you. Amen? So in that, I said we are born into the kingdom but some of us are lost in religion. Wow. All right. We are born into the kingdom of God, but some of us get lost in religion. So the Greek word I told y'all, the ecclesia is the called out assembly, which is the congregation of believers. God, God called us to be the light in the midst of darkness, and he called us to be the salt of the earth. So as I was researching this and studying this out, it said darkness is only the absence of light. All right. That's true. Uh, think about that for a minute. Darkness is only the absence of light. So if it was dark and I struck a match, where would your eyes go? To the light. Because that's the light. That's who you are in the yeah. earth. Yeah. You are the ecclesia. Yeah. You are the light of the earth. And if we don't let our light shine, the world will be dark. So we can't shrink back. We got to lean in to everything that God is calling us to do. Amen? Amen. As we lean in, we say, I am the salt. What does salt get done? Salt gives it flavor. 
So if you don't have no salt, you bland. Salt gives the food flavor. Salt gives the world flavor. Amen? So back in Matthew number 16, um, Jesus had asked the type of disciples, he said, who do you say I am? Yeah. And he said, well, who do first he asked, who do me and say that I am? And they said, some say you John the Baptist, some say you this, some say that. He said, well, who do you say that I am? You know, because they said what the people said. Now Jesus confronted them, his disciples. And he said, well, who do you say that I am? And then in verse number 16, Simon Peter replied, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus answered him and said, blessed, happy, fortunate to be envied are you, Simon Bar-Jonah. What does Bar mean? Son of. Simon, son of Jonah. For flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And then the scriptures go on in verse number 18 that says, I tell you this, Peter, the Greek word petro, a large piece of rock. Yeah. Upon this rock, yeah. the Greek word petro, yeah. a, who, a huge boulder, I will build my church. And the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. So for years and years and years when I was in church and I would hear that, I'm like, okay, so God built his church upon Peter. Because remember in the scriptures and Acts, it goes on to say that Peter preached and 3,000 people got saved. So it sounded right to me, right? But then when I start praying this prayer, Holy Spirit, reveal to me your truth. Yeah. Holy yeah. Spirit, don't let me believe a lie about you. Reveal to me your truth. Yeah. Then God revealed to me that when he said upon this rock I will build my church, he was talking about the revelation that Peter had that he was the son of God. He was building the church on that revelation. So if you have that revelation and you believe that Jesus is the Son of God, that's how the ecclesia is performed. Amen? That's how we walk out because we're not just Christians. We are believers. We're not just Christians. We're believers. And believers should do what? Believe. So if you're a believer, you should believe. So sometimes people are not getting it because they think that the church is a place where you come. They think that a church is a place where you just go and hear the word of God. Now, in this, this dispensation, they call this the church. But the reality is, we are the church. And wherever we go, we bring the light and the salt with us. Amen? Amen. So Jesus goes on in, in verse number, um, in Colossians um, 1, 15 through 18, he told, him, he told them that, the Bible talks about Jesus being an invisible God. He's the firstborn of creation, and all creation was born for him, and everything was born so that he could use and do everything. So you are born, you are created for Christ. Yeah. It's not about you. Say, it's not about me. It's about Jesus. One more time, it's not about me. It's about Jesus. And when you get that clue, you'll understand that the ecclesia, the ecclesia, it's like it's like ecclesia, but it's like the church, what they call it, the evangelical ecclesia, something, whatever. So it relates to the Christian church, the ecclesiastical, ecclesiastical, whatever. Okay, so we, there you go. Thank you. Say it one more time. The ecclesiastical, amen. So the ecclesiastical relates to the church, it relates to the body, but that's saying that the ecclesia in in a, in, in, a, in a congregation. So individually, we are the ecclesia. We are the called out ones yeah. of Jesus Christ. But then we come together, he let me bless it with our I'm trying to say. We do the church, right? So in that, we should have supernatural power. Yeah. Amen. In that, we should have supernatural power. So the word of God and the spirit of God produces the supernatural power of God. So if you don't have no word, you can't operate in the supernatural because your foundation is not there. So we want to operate in the supernatural God, and I do. I want to operate in the supernatural power. I want to operate in the supernatural power and authority that God died for me to have. He died so you can have this supernatural power and authority. But some people just sit on it. It's like you have received an inheritance, and your inheritance is there, but you don't, you don't access it. So that's the supernatural power of God. We should see the supernatural power of God in our lives every day. 
The Bible says, how do you know them? You know them by their fruit. What kind of fruit are you bearing? Yeah. What kind of fruit are you bearing? In this house, we say our, our foundational scripture, we talk about the fruit. We say operating in the fruit, um, walking in the fruit of the spirit, operating in the gifts of the spirit. So the fruit of the spirit is the foundation. What's the fruit of the spirit? The foundation. So the fruit of the spirit is the foundation. So if we're walking in the fruit of the spirit, that means that we're walking in love, joy, peace, patience, long-suffering, forbearance, uh, self-control, and all of that stuff. So that's the fruit of the Spirit. So if we don't have the fruit of the Spirit in our life, we don't have the foundation. Wow. So we got to have the foundation to be able to build on it so we can walk in the supernatural yeah. power of God. Amen? Amen. So in knowing that we want to operate in the supernatural power of God so we can have the kingdom of God here on earth. The kingdom, the king means the king, which is who? Jesus. The king is Jesus. Domain is your sphere of influence. So the kingdom of God is Jesus' sphere of influence. So Jesus' sphere of influence is through who? You, the ecclesia. Everywhere you go, you yeah. should be... Uh, bringing Christ. You should be an ambassador of Christ. You should be the ecclesia. People's lives should be changed. Why? Because you showed up. Amen. Because you showed up. You don't have to say, you know what, you got a situation going, hold on one minute, let me call the pastor. Hey, apostle, they got a situation going on there. You think you could go over there? You have the power. Say, so I have the power. I have the authority. Jesus lives in me. And operates through me. So you have to know that so you can walk in the power and the authority that Jesus died for you to have. So as the ecclesia, we should see the supernatural power of God operating in our lives. So when the king is Jesus, the domain is the territory or the owner of control, the ruler of the government. So we, our sphere of influence is our domain and Jesus is our king. So we are ambassadors of Jesus Christ and we should always know that everywhere we go, we are representing Jesus. Amen. 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 So we want to represent Jesus everywhere we go. And we want to keep that in our mind. But how can I represent you if I have not read your uh -huh. constitution? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Mm. The constitution is the word of God. So if I don't know the word of God, if I don't know the constitution, how can I represent Jesus? How can I? I think about in my Toastmasters, they have some foreign people that came over from India and Africa and other places, and they have to take a test to become a United States citizen. And all the things that they have to know is mind-blowing to me. We are born here, and we don't know half of the stuff that they have to know to become a United States citizen. Yeah. So we have two citizenships. We are citizens here on Earth, but our real home is what? Heaven. Clap your hands for Jesus. That's something to be happy. that our home is really in heaven and we're just down here checking things out, being an ambassador, yes. the ecclesia, the called out ones for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen? Yes. So when Jesus called us to live this supernatural life, it's some foundational things that he told us about. So one, he said that for all who are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. So yeah. if you're not led by the Spirit of God, you're not a son of God. It's just that simple. You might be a Christian and not a believer. Because if you're a believer, you believe what the Constitution says, and you want to operate out of that Constitution. Amen? So in Matthew 8 and 27, it says, The men were stunned with bewilderment and wondered and marveled. and said, What kind of man is this that even the seas obey him? What kind of man is this? Jesus says, stand still, and it stood still. And they said, what kind of manner of man is this? If he is our father, what kind of manner of man are you? That's what you want people to be saying about you. Like, when you come on the scene, if you say something, it happened. When you speak, things have to happen. You change atmospheres when you come into the room. Amen? You know, the world got this saying, now they talk about we match your energy. I said, we ain't matching energy, we changing the atmosphere. That's what I'm saying. I ain't matching no energy, we coming above that. Michelle Obama said, when they go low, we go high. Amen? So we gonna go high. We not matching energy, we changing the atmosphere. We coming in, whatever was going on, it has to cease. Why? Because I'm here. Because I'm here. It's gotta go. It's gotta go. Sickness gotta go. Depression gotta go. the authority that God has called me to. Yeah. 
had shut down. Wasn't nothing able to do nothing because he said, peace be still. And then he says, when you bear, produce much fruit. I'm in John 15 and 8. He says, when you bear, produce much fruit, the Father is honored and glorified. And you show and prove yourself to be a true follower of mine. So if we are the ecclesia, we should be bearing fruit. Amen. And what's the fruit that we're bearing? The fruit of the Spirit. Amen. We should be bearing the fruit of the Spirit, and then right. the supernatural happens when we operate in the gifts of the Spirit. Right. So if you are somewhere and the supernatural is not being made manifest, you need to ask yourself, is God there? Right. Because wherever God is, he will be glorified. And he will use his people to glorify himself. And I think sometimes we get kind of comfortable and we just kind of take it for granted that God is there. Salvation is supernatural. Did y'all hear me? Salvation is supernatural. The redemptive power of Jesus Christ is supernatural. Think about it. So with salvation, I used to live wretched. And now I done changed and now I'm living holy. That's supernatural. That's super, I don't know about y'all, but when I was in my sin, I liked my sin. I wasn't having a bad time. I wasn't woe is me. I was, I was having a good time in my sin. And the Holy Spirit arrested me in the midst of what I was doing and made me go that way. Amen? Amen. So with that, it's like, okay, just because you in sin don't mean you sad, don't mean you broke, don't mean you depressed, don't mean you none of that. You in sin. That's the bottom line. So with that, we have to say, okay, Lord, you have to, the whole salvation piece is supernatural because it's contrary to what you would normally want to do. I didn't want to go that way. I didn't want to do that. And I was like, I remember Pastor A was talking this morning, and she said something about when she got saved, and I was trying to think. I'm like, when did I get saved? I think I got saved every day when I watched the 700 Club. Every day. And then I went back out and did everything that I wanted to do, and I went... I'm not talking to you about that. I went back out and did everything that I was big and bad enough to do. He talking about I got saved when I really met him. I got serious about my walk with Christ. I really did because I was saved. And it's like, like I had prophesied to the guy about the Pleasantville, black and white. It's like once I got serious about my walk with Christ, it was almost like I felt like I was playing church. Before, but I wasn't playing church. I was sincere with what I was doing at that time, but I wasn't doing what I'm doing now in the capacity that I'm doing it now. So then when I look back in retro, I feel like I was playing church, but I really wasn't playing church. I was sincere at that time. And God will honor that sincerity. So y'all know my testimony. It's like, okay, I was a big greeter at the door at church one Sunday, and 30 days later, I'm a pastor. I'm like, Jesus, what are you doing? What are you doing? But God knew what was in my heart. God knew the word that was deposited in me. So in this house, y'all getting a lot of training. I'm like, I wish, I wish I had all the training that is exposed to you all. So please take advantage of this training that the house gives you. Because pastor was my coach. It was like a boot camp, right? <laughs> So he's like, okay. I'm like, they want me to come and speak because I know a lot of people. So when you get saved, people want to see if it's real. Let's invite her over. Let's see if she really got a word in her mouth. I'm like, they invited me over there. He's like, okay, what kind of church is that? I said, I don't know. He'll Google. He's like, that's a Baptist church, girl. You can't wear them earrings. You can't wear them heels. You can't go with no red lipstick. And I ain't even know. So I don't, even to this day, I don't know. And I thank God that I don't know. Apostle, I mean, Pastor. Pastor Russell was talking about they put a chair up and say that the doors of the house is open. I'm like, I don't know nothing about that. That's not my testimony. Now, I grew up, my family on my mama's side was saved. And, no, I'm sorry, my family on my daddy's side was saved. My family on my mama's side was heathens. Good heathens. So when they would come over, I would be saved upstairs with the saints. I call them the saints. That's my daddy's side of the family. And then I go downstairs and smoke weed with the heathens. <laughs> Then I come back upstairs and say hallelujah with the saints. And then I go back downstairs with the heathens and get my groove on. Then I come back upstairs. So that's, that's my life. So my father's family was in church. They was Bible thumpers. They was holy rollers. They were saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, by baptized. All of that. My mama's family had 
had jug joints and was making moonshine and selling weed. So I was exposed to all of it. But I thank God I ended up In verse number 15, John 15 and 8, it says, When you bear, produce much food, fruit, my Father is honored and glorified. And you show and prove yourself to be a true follower of mine. True. But this is the kicker part, because I don't know if y about y'all, if you was out there in your CND, and said, you know what? I'm going to get myself together. Don't raise your hand, don't nobody know. So you say, I'm going to get myself together. And when I get myself together, then I'm going to go to church. Because I don't want to be a what? A hypocrite. A hypocrite. I don't want to be a hypocrite. So when I get myself together, when I stop smoking weed, when I stop lying, when I stop sleeping around, when I stop doing all the things that I think I ain't supposed to do, then I'm going to go to church. Then. Not a minute before. I'm not going to so verse number 16, can we drop down to 16? So verse number 16, it says, You have not chosen me, but I chose you. And I have appointed you, you that you might go and bear fruit and, and keep on bearing, and that your fruit may be lasting, that it may be Appointed me ordained. Yeah. Declared beforehand. I legitimized you because I called you wow. to this operation. I legitimize your operation because wow. I have appointed you, amen. Wow. To bring forth fruit, to bring forth the supernatural fruit of my spirit. So God has already preordained you for the assignment that He has for you. So it ain't that you decided. He chose you. And he chose each and every one of y'all. Have y'all remember that scriptures? It says, um, few are called, many are called, but few are chosen. And then I just feel like, well, what does that mean? Many are called or few are chosen. He called us all. But the chosen ones said yes. Wow. Come on. Right. That's it. It's right. just that simple. You know, we be trying to make it real deep and, and spooky and want to go real. It's real simple. If you say yes, you're chosen. And then if you equip yourself for the calling, for the task at hand, you are anointed and appointed. Amen? Amen. Amen. There is nothing too hard for God. In Jeremiah 32 and 17, it says, Oh, Lord God, behold that you have made the heavens and the earth. And by your great power and outstretched arm, there is nothing too hard for you. It said that he is El Shaddai. He is God Almighty. And God Almighty can do anything. Amen. Amen. God Almighty can open up blinded eyes. God Almighty can All heal right. the sick. Yeah. God Almighty yeah. can take care yeah. of any situation yeah. or any circumstance yeah. that you may have. So some of us are in what I call a spiritual ICU. We're in spiritual ICU. We need some help. Some of us are in financial ICU. We need to, our finances to be spoken to. Some of us are in relational ICU. We need our relationships to be motivated. So when God wants to do something in your life, you have to operate out of a sense of urgency. You can't sit back and just wait for something to happen. You got to make something happen. How do I make something happen? I take the word of God and I apply it to my situation. And when I take the word of God and I apply it to my situation, I should see something happen. Something should always happen always. when you take the word of God always. and apply it to your situation. Yeah, yeah. Why? Because the word of God says that the angels are hearkening to the word of God. Yeah. What are they hearkening to? The word of God. Not the thoughts of God. Right? Because a lot of people think thoughts in their mind, but don't speak them out of their mouth. The angel cannot hearken unless you speak it out of your mouth. And then when you speak it out of your mouth, the angels of the Lord are hearkening to do what it is that you are saying. But they only respond to the word. They don't respond to 
woe is me. They don't respond to the politics. They don't respond to the weather. They don't respond to the news. They respond to the word of God. But there is what's called heavenly angels, right? And the heavenly angels respond to the word of God. And then there's called demonic activities, demonic forces. And demonic forces have the same supernatural power that the heavenly forces are. But greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. But you gotta know that there's two different forces and there's a constant battle going on. So depending on what you speak out of your mouth, it's depending on who you gonna activate. Who you gonna activate? Am I activating the supernatural power of God? Or am I activating the supernatural power of demons? It's still an activation. Because some people are so thirsty for the supernatural that they'll tap into some demonic stuff and see some supernatural activity and think it's God. But God says that their eyes are blinded until he take the scales off of your eyes and then you can truly see. Because Satan is the great what? Deceiver. He's the great deceiver and he's a liar. He's the father of lies and the truth ain't in him. So if you're not rooted and grounded in the word, Satan will whisper things in your ear that's a lie. And then you can stumble and fall because you don't know the truth. Think about Adam and Eve. They was there in the garden. Everything was cool. They had everything that they needed. And then Satan came and whispered in her ear a lie. He said, you want to be like Jesus. You want to be like God. But the reality was she was already like God. But she didn't know who she was. So we need to know who we are as the ecclesia, as the called out ones of Christ. And we need to get in this world like we have never gotten in this world before. If anything happened, they said, you squeeze somebody, whatever's in them going to come out. If you squeeze in the world of God should come out. My own nature should be dead, amen? My old cussing you out, punching you in the face, doing all that kind of stuff, that should be dead. But you know what the scriptures even say? That we die to ourselves, what? Daily. It's a daily dying. A daily dying. You know, you think you got it together, then somebody push that button, and then there you go. There you go. There you go. You know, Pastor will always be up here talking about me. I'm going to talk about him too. Now. So I was on the phone with him one day. And he was, um, I don't know where he was in the building, but somebody was outside and they was like, he was like, you know, oh, I was going to come. I was going to come up to the church. So he said, don't come up to the church. These guys is outside and I don't know who they are. They looking kind of shady. So I don't want you coming up here. He's very protective of me. He don't want me around. Nothing is going to be drama, okay? And I'm grateful, amen? church. I called him and I said, I seen the guys out there. So before that it happened, I was leaving um, the community development center and he was like, wait a minute, hold on. And then I don't know if he thought that he had hung up his phone. Off. He was like, what you doing out there, man? And the guy was like, I'm just, he was like, get away from my car. And then I guess he went up to the car and he pulled the handle. Oh, that was all she wrote. That was all. What are you doing about my car, man? And he said he had a bat. He was ready up there to go upside the guy's head. I'm like a possum. Where's the law? Where's the law of suffering? Where's the patience?
she'll rise back up on me. I come a long way, baby, like Virginia Slims, but if you catch me on the right day, I give you a piece of my mind, a piece of my ear, a piece of my foot, I give you all of it. So we have to read those scriptures daily and surrender and submit to God. Because any given certain situation, you can go back to that old nature. That old man can flare up. That old man can flare up. Amen? We have authority to operate in the supernatural power of God. Some people don't even understand what the supernatural power of God means. Some people think that the supernatural power of God is falling out in the spirit or think they're dancing or something. That's not the supernatural power of God. I came up with my own definition. I said things happen. Okay, the supernatural power of God is when things happen beyond scientific understanding or that defies the laws of nature. That's supernatural. There's no explanation for it. Supernatural rise above the limitations of process, above science. It's unexplainable, yet undeniable. The supernatural power of God. And we should be manifesting, we should be living, we should be operating in the supernatural power of God every day as the ecclesia. So the enemy don't want you to know that you have the power and authority to operate. They want you to say, oh, that was for Old Testament. Oh, that was for back in the biblical days. No, it's for today. How many of y'all believe that it's for today? So if you believe it's for today, you are the ecclesia. You are a believer. You just ask God for the supernatural power of God. And then it will be manifest in your life. One day we was in a restaurant. And when we walked into the restaurant, it was this white lady and another lady. And they, they set us in this booth. And they was in the booth behind us, but the lady was just walking, and you could tell she was in pain. You could see it on her face. She was just walking like this, and the other lady was kind of standing behind her. So Greg's back was turned to him, and I could see her right there. And so I was like, Greg, I had to pray for her. And then he said, what? And before he said, what? Finished, I was up. I said, ma'am, I'm going to pray for you, please. And she looked at me, and then she was like, yeah, you can pray for me. So I prayed for her. I prayed that God would heal her body right there in the restaurant. I didn't ask her to come to church so I could pray for her. I prayed for her right there in the restaurant. So I didn't get make it loud. I didn't cause a scene or anything. I just prayed for her um, to ask the Holy Spirit to heal her body, lose all the infirmities out of her body or whatever. And then when I finished praying, I just sat down. And then after that, whatever was ailing her, lifted. So then she came over to the table. She said, you know what? We're believers. We're believers in Jesus Christ as well. And I just want to thank you so much for praying for me. I just appreciated that you were just faithful to God. And you just listened to what God said. And you responded and obeyed. Glory be to God. Thank you. So then at the end, we get ready to go. And then we was like, we ordered our food and stuff, so now we finna leave. And so the waitress lady came over there. She said, oh, the other ladies that was in the booth, they took care of your ticket. Wow. Yeah. They took care of your ticket. Yeah. So when you obey God, he will reward you in some shape, form, or fashion. But you just got to have the power and the authority and not be scared to do what it is that God has called you to do. Because when you do it, if you think in your mind, you be like, that's not. How they gonna look at me? What they gonna say about me? You in a restaurant? First of all, we in a restaurant in what I call Lily White Land. We the only colored people in there. I'm telling y'all the truth. So we walk in the restaurant, and when we walked in, the um, we were standing at the door. They was like, we wasn't there. They walk right past us. This us. This the people. Then here comes somebody else. Me and, me and Greg looked at each other. I said, I think we got on our invisible clothes. I don't think they can see us. Right? Then we right here in line. Two white people walk in the door. They stand right there. They walk. They was like, hey, may we help y'all? I looked at Greg. Greg was like, uh, we was here first. I go, oh, okay. I said, I guess we did have our invisible clothes. We had to say something so they could see us. They couldn't see us. So we could have got an attitude in life. And that missed that lady, missed her miracle, missed her moment, missed the assignment. So it ain't always going to be easy for you to get to what it is that 
God wants you to do. But you got to stay the course. Say stay the course. Say stay the course. You have to stay the course to get to what it is that God wants you to do. Amen. So the supernatural is unexplainable yet undeniable. It's a higher level, and when we go to that higher level, we reveal Jesus and we reveal the and we glorify God. So when we reveal Jesus and we glorify God, when we do what the supernatural is telling us to do, we will see the manifestation. So supernatural is really the entwining of faith and the anointing. So you have to have the faith for it to happen and the anointing for it to manifest. So when we intertwine faith and the anointing, we will see the supernatural power of God. I also said the supernatural is the word of God with the spirit of God. So it's the faith and the anointing. It's the word of God with the spirit of God. Then we will see the supernatural power of God. So as we go through this and we talk about us being the ecclesia, it says that there's five foundations that we go through to manifest the supernatural power of God and walk in his kingdom. Amen? Amen. So one is the authority. God has given us authority. You have the authority. Say, I have. The authority. And then we need to operate off the laws that God has given us. The laws of the earth is different from the laws of heaven. So it's two different things. So we want to operate in the laws of heaven. Amen. Then the government, we are from the kingdom of heaven, not the kingdom of earth. And then there's a citizenship. Our citizenship is not here. Our citizenship is from heaven. So we should bring heaven down to the earth. Amen. And then lastly is the culture. What kind of culture are you living in? What kind of influence are you having? Are you giving Jesus a black guy? Ah, or are people seeing oh, your life and asking you, what must I do to be saved? Yeah. Is situations happening at work and you at the water cooler cussing and talking about everybody just like everybody else is cussing and talking about everybody? Please. Or are you different? Are you letting your light shine? Mm. Are you being the salt of the earth? So we have a choice at any given moment. We can go either way. Like I said, some days you're good and some days you're bad. Some days that devil talking on my shoulder and I'm giving him my total ear. I need the heaven talking, the angel talking on my shoulder and I'm ignoring the devil. So you just got to know what's, where, where you at at any given time, at any given time, where you at. You got to check your pulse. That's what they call it, checking your pulse. So with the authority, the ecclesia, the believers, the believers are called to exercise the authority with the alignment with God and then submit to his authority. So in that, in Luke 10, 18 to 20, it says, And Jesus said to them, I saw Satan falling like a lightning flash from heaven. Behold, I have given you the authority, the power to trample upon serpents and scorpions, the physical and mental strength and the ability over all the powers of the enemy possessed, and nothing shall any way harm you. So God has given you the power mentally and physically. You have the power. So when I thought about that, I was doing a study, and it says there's stronghold and demonic forces or demonic activities. So some people have strongholds and some people have demonic activities. That means that demons are inside of them or they're being possessed by demons yeah, yeah. or whatever. So a stronghold is in your mind. So a stronghold is what you think about the situation or the circumstances. So if you think that, it says, as a man thinketh, is so it. is he. So there's a saying that says, if you think you're wrong, or you think you're right. You know, it says, if you think you can, or you think you can't, either way, you're right. Yeah. yeah. Just, just ponder that for a minute. Yeah. If you think you can, or you think you can't, either way, you're right. So if you think you can, you can. Yeah. If you think you can't, you won't. Yeah. You won't even try. So you have to know that I operate in the supernatural power of God. And there's nothing too hard for God as he flows through me. So it's not me. It's who? It's the spirit of God on the inside of me. So when I yield to the spirit of God on the inside of me, I can do supernatural things. I can have the supernatural manifestation of what it is that God has called me to do. Live out and be here in the earth. Amen. So with that, it's like God works out so many things on our behalf. So our deeds are supposed to be um, doing what God wants us to do. Our thoughts, our ways. It says his ways are not our ways, and his thoughts are not our thoughts. So it's not my will, it's thy will. So we want to operate off of what God wants us to do. But so many times, we are so married to what we want to do. Wow. wow. I don't want to do that. Wow. I don't want to go there. I don't want to go over there. I don't want to, I want this. I, what about me? What about me? What about me? It's not about you. It's about Jesus. And once we understand that it's 
about Jesus, we'll do what it is that God is calling us to do. We'll do what it is that God is calling us to do if we are serious about our walk with Christ. So just because we are, we think we're serious. Remember, I told y'all I thought I was really a good Christian, but I was truly lukewarm. I wasn't doing half of the stuff that I'm doing now. I wasn't walking half of the way that I'm walking now. But you couldn't tell me that I wasn't saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, doing everything that God wanted me to do. But I was half doing it. I was still doing what I wanted to do and still thinking that I was doing what he wanted me to do, wow. but I wasn't. Wow. So we have to do inventory wow. on ourselves yes. and ask ourselves, where am I? Wow. What is it that I should be doing right now? Amen? Amen. The Amplified in John 14 and 12 says, I am surely that most solemnly I tell you that if anyone steadfast believes in me, he will himself be able to do the things that I do. And, I will, and you will even do the greater works. So all the things that Jesus did, we are supposed to have the power and authority to do them. Did Jesus open, open up blind eyes? Yes. Did Jesus raise the dead? Yes. Did Jesus heal the sick? Yes. Did Jesus help people in their situation, in their circumstance, yes. no matter how much in sin they were? Yes. When he went to the lady with the well and she came there, he was like, could you give me some water? She's like, what you doing talking to me? Y'all don't talk to me. Y'all Jews don't talk to me. I'm a Gentile. What you doing hollering at me? He was like, I need some water. And if you knew who I was, I would give you some water and you would never thirst again. So she was faithful. She gave him the water. And then he said, okay, uh, go home and tell your husband. She was like, I'm not married. He said, yeah, I know. And the man you living with ain't your husband now. You done had five husbands. And the one you with ain't yours. So she had an encounter she had an encounter with the true and living God. Yeah. And then you were able to see her fruit because she went back and told everybody. Well, let me tell you about a man. I met a man at the well, and he told me all about myself. If you pick up the word of God, that's the man at the well. And he will tell you all about yourself. You will be able to read in the scriptures all about you and then let that be a mirror, a reflection, so you can change your life. Amen? Amen. The word of God in the Greek means action, the works, the greater works. You will have greater actions and greater deeds. Jesus proved his critics wrong by performing divine miracles. So if Jesus performed divine miracles, what? We can perform divine miracles as well. So Jesus had instructed us to do all the things that he had called us to do. In John 14 and 9, let's read that in concert. And I'm almost done. John 14, 9 through 11. John 14, 9 and 11. So a few verses Jesus talked about how he explained to his disciples to embrace the truth of God. Because there's a truth of God that's available to us, but a lot of us don't tap into that truth. We just believe on the surface. But if you really want all of God, you got to dig deep. you got to dive. you got to dive deeper into his word so you can get a deeper understanding of his word. Amen? Are we there? So I'm going to do the odd, y'all do the even. Um, Jesus replied and said to them, I have, I have been with you all for so long a time. Do you have not recognized me yet, Philip? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show me the Father? Let's pause right there, so a little bad drill. So they were with Jesus, and Philip was there. Philip was saying that he wanted to see God the Father. And Jesus is telling Philip, hey, don't you see that I am the Father and the Father is me? So I've been walking with you all this time, and you still don't recognize? How many people in your life don't know who you are? They don't have a clue of who you are. It's like if you really knew who I was, you wouldn't talk to me like that. If you really knew who I was, you wouldn't treat me like that. If you really knew who I was. But that's all right, you ain't got to do nothing. You got to show me. My mama used to say, I can show you better not to tell you. I can show you better not to tell you. So just show them better than you can tell them, amen? So this is his next response. Verse number 10, that's on y'all. Father is 
in me or else believe me for the sake of the very works themselves. Believe me because you don't see the miracles. You don't see me open a blind eye. You don't see me raise people from the dead. You don't see me go to the pool of Bethesda and get the man up that has been there for 38 years. You've seen all of this. If you cannot trust me, at least let the works that I do in my Father's name convince you. Convince you. So the question that he asked him in the beginning, when he asked Philip, um, what did he ask Philip? He said, do you not recognize who I am? Was a rhetorical question. It's like asking somebody, do you have a brain? Do you not hear what I'm saying? So he asked him that in a, a rhetorical way. The supernatural signs and acts cannot be explained. Laws cannot define supernatural acts because they are supernatural. So we live in a natural world, but we have access to the supernatural power of God. And I just want to admonish you to tap into the access. Ask God to use you in a supernatural capacity. Ask him to reveal to you his supernatural yeah. works. But see, the problem that most people have, they feel like they got to be cleaned up first. I think I got to get right first before God can use you. God can use a drunk. God can use a crackhead. God can use a prostitute. If God can use a donkey, if God can use a donkey, he can use you. If God can, he can use whatever he wants to use to do whatever he wants to do. You just have to be a yielding vessel to be used of God. So we place it in our heart that we want to see the supernatural manifestation and we want to walk in the laws of God so that the supernatural will be made manifest. Why? Because we are the ecclesia, the called out ones here in the earth. So in being the ecclesia, the supernatural law is God's intervention into earthly affairs. So when we ask God to intervene, we glorify him because he, we reveal who he is through us. So as we reveal who God is through us, we will see the supernatural manifestation of what it is that he has for us. So you just got to have a desire in your heart. What is your heart's desire? Do you desire to see the supernatural power of God? Do you desire to see signs, wonders, and miracles? Do you desire to let God use you in any way that you see fit? Do you desire to introduce your sphere of influence to the true and living God? Or are you living your life in such a way that people are not sure? Like, are you serious about that? Is that what's really going on? So we need to know what it is that we are desiring of God as we walk out the ecclesia of God. So we talked about the law. We talked about the authority. Now let's talk about the government. It says, while believers are citizens of God, they are also called to respect earthly authorities. The Bible encourages submission to the government unless conflicts, unless it conflicts with the commands of God. So with that, it's like there's a government that we live by in the Bible, and then there's a government that we live by here in the earth. So there's two separate things. Yeah. So the government here says that smoking weed is legal. Uh, How many Christians going to ask us can they smoke weed? Man. Serious. It's legal now. Can we do it? Is it against what the word of God says? So in the word of God, it says that marriage is between what? One man and one woman. But the world says that you can marry a man and be a man. The world says you can marry a woman and be a woman, and that's legal. So that's not the government that we are conforming to. So you've got to understand that when these things are happening in the world, what is contrary to what the word of God says? So I always tell people when it comes to political stuff, vote your conscience. I'm not related to a political party, but I vote my conscience, and I look at the person. Because your policies can sound good, but your character is jacked up. I ain't going to be able to do it. I ain't going to be able to do it. So you got to pray and ask God, how can you do things? Because God is in control. He is in control. So with, with that being said, it's like we got to know what God is telling us to do. Amen? So this is our last scripture for today. Let's go to Romans 13, 1 through 7. Romans 13, 1 through 7. And this is about the government. So 13, 1 through 7. Um, 13 says, let every person be loyally subject to the governing civil authorities. For these are no authorities except by God. His permission, his sanction to those that exist do so by God's appointments. 
So we need to know that God is in control and we do Amen. what God is telling us to do. No more, no less. Y'all read number two, number two, ready, read. Therefore, he are not terror to people of God, good conduct, but to those of bad behavior who have no dread of him who is in authority. They do what is right and they will receive his approval and condemnation. For, for he is God's servant for your good, but if you do wrong, you should dread him and be afraid, for he does not bear to avoid God's wrath and escape his punishment, but also in the matter of principle for the sake of conscience. Number six. For the same reason you pay taxes for the civil authorities, our official servants under God, devoting themselves to attending to the very service. Number seven. Render to all men their dues. Pay taxes to whom taxes are due. Revenue to whom revenue is due. Respect to whom respect is due. So, so we are encouraged to do what the word of God says in the capacity that God says it. So if we are in this world and we're supposed to pay taxes, pay taxes. If we're supposed to give honor to somebody, give honor to that person. Yeah. Whatever it is telling you to do, that's what we're supposed to do as faithfully submitted under the government of the ecclesia. Amen? So if God is telling us to do something or if there's a law, we need to be following the laws. Because the scripture says if, they, if we don't, there's some repercussions to that. So people are under the impression, okay, once I get saved, everything is going to be peaches and cream, tiptoeing through the roses, everything going to be good. Every day I'm going to walk up and be like, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's not true. So then we have to think about if we're planting good seeds, we're going to do what? Reap a good harvest. If we planted bad seeds, we're going to do what? Reap a bad harvest. And what happens a lot of times we have planted bad seeds and then we start reaping the harvest from the bad seeds that we planted and then we switch and we start doing good. But the harvest of those bad seeds have not already manifested. So we got to keep on doing it because then we'll stop. We'll be like, well, this thing ain't working. This ain't working. I've been doing good for three months. <laughs> but I've been a hellion for 30 years. You got 30 years worth of hellion seed in the ground. And then for three months, you want to try to do what, what you consider to be good. So then, okay, God, am I in right standards with you? It's, it, this ain't the microwave mentality. It takes longer than that. You got to keep on doing good and keep on doing good until you see the results of the good things that you've done. So if I keep on doing good, eventually I am going to see the results. And then all the seeds from the bad stuff, that harvest will be over. We just speak of crop failure in Jesus' name. A crop failure in Jesus' name. All those seeds will fail. Amen. And then as I continue to plant my good seeds, I can get all the good things that God has preordained for me to have. So in that, we need to know, okay, Lord, I want to do right. My heart is right. Paul says, when I want to do right, I wind up doing evil. When I want to do good, evil is all around me. So we have to really be intentional about cultivating our relationship with Jesus so we can get the results that we're looking for. Because if you're looking for God results, you got to do God things. Yeah. You can't be expecting, my mother used to say, you have a beer budget with champagne taste. You can't be expecting to get some champagne with two dollars at the corner store. Like, Pookie, how much is just one real? I just want one, one real. Just one real, dear. Just one. So we have to know that what we want from God and what are we willing to do for it. Are we willing to be the ecclesia? Because it's an assignment and it's a tall order. So I can't continue to live raggedy and want to be blessed of God. 
I can't continue to do the things that I was doing and expect to be blessed of God. There has to be a change. If you want something different, you got to you got to do something different. So what are you willing to do differently? That's the question. What are you willing to do differently? I don't know, some of y'all know I coach people, I coach entrepreneurs. And in my coaching clients, I normally ask them, what are you willing to stop doing? What are you willing to start doing? And what are you willing to continue to do? So you gotta stop doing things that are not serving you. If this is not serving you, stop doing it. What's serving you? That's what I wanna continue to do. Whatever's serving me well, I want to continue to do that. And then if it's something that I desire, then I want to start doing that. So when I first start my coaching sessions, I always start off with that. What do you want to stop doing? What do you want to start doing? And what do you want to continue to do? I ask y'all that for your spiritual walk. In your spiritual walk, what you want to stop doing? I give y'all a suggestion. Stop making up excuses about why you can't spend time with God. It's always an excuse. You know what? I was, but I got to do this. I, I would, but, you know, Keisha and them going to get to school at such and such time. It's always an excuse. So stop with your excuses. I say when you start spending time with God until you get used to it, start with five minutes a day. And we live in an information age. There's no excuse. There's no excuse. Sometimes I get up in the morning and I just put on my YouTube page and listen to some scripture before I even get out the bed. Because it's feeding my spirit. And then when I get up, I either read the word, I either listen to some worship music, and it started off at five minutes a day. And that was up to two hours. So I try to do the first two hours of the day, I try to get that to God. So I always say, tell myself, do the God thing first. Because I have a whole lot of things to do, but I always tell myself, do the God thing first. So I challenge you to do the God thing first. And when you do the God thing first, it sets the precedent for your day. It sets the precedence for your day. So it doesn't mean that you don't have other things to do. Uh, I don't know nobody busy as me. So we all busy. But I make time for Jesus. I make time for Jesus. Because my life is so much better because I make that time. So I just admonish you all to make time for Jesus. Make time for Jesus. So as the ecclesia, I want you to know that you are the called out ones. So touch yourself and say, I am, I am the church. The church. Say, I am, I am the, church. the church. So I want y'all to go out and be the church. the church. Go out and be the church. If God put it on your heart to do something to bless somebody, bless them. If God put it on your heart to say a kind word to somebody, say a kind word. Don't look at their faces. Because if you look at their faces, then you're going to be feeling some kind of way that you're not going to give them Jesus. Amen. You'll be like an apostle coming with a bat. <laughs> so we want to say, I am the ecclesia, and we want to live our life for Jesus. And we want to do what it is that God is telling us to do. Did y'all learn something today? Yeah. it is for Jesus. already. I don't know about y'all. I'm tired for praise and worship. Give it up for Darian. <laughs> Worthy of my praise. Did I go so much? 
Who the grace 